Ever wonder the difference between meteors, meteoroids, and meteorites? Well, meteoroids are space matter that would become meteors if they ever entered Earth's atmosphere. Meteors are rocks that enter the atmosphere and burn up, creating a streak of light. Meteorites are rocks that enter the atmosphere and survive it, thus hitting the ground. All of these come from space matter, such as asteroids, small rocky bodies orbiting the sun, comets, and other debris. One such asteroid orbiting in the asteroid belt was recently named a dwarf planet. Dwarf planets are celestial bodies orbiting a star that is massive enough to be rounded by its own gravity, but has not cleared its neighboring region of matter, and is not a satellite. This asteroid named Ceres, after the Roman goddess of growing plants, the harvest, and motherly love, was discovered on January 1, 1801. Ceres is the largest asteroid and the only dwarf planet in the inner solar system. It is a rock and ice body 590 miles wide and contains about one-third the mass of the asteroid belt. It has a core of rock and an ice mantle 100 kilometers thick. Its orbit takes around 4.6 years, but soon we will know more as the spacecraft Dawn was launched in 2007 and is scheduled to arrive on Ceres sometime in 2015. The next closest dwarf planet is Pluto, which orbits in around 248 years. Then, the next dwarf planet is Maki Maki, which has a 310-year orbit. There has been found traces of ethane, methane, and nitrogen on its surface. It was discovered in 2005 and was named after the god of fertility as the discoverer's wife was pregnant. It was discovered recently that it is covered in almost pure methane ice. However, between Pluto and Maki Maki is a barely qualified dwarf planet named Haumea, after a god of fertility as well. This planet is assumed to have been hit by another object half its size to explain its rapid spin. It completes one rotation every four hours. Because of this fast spin, it has flattened into a somewhat ovular shape looking like a smashed football. It just barely makes the rounded by its own gravity qualification of dwarf planets. It also has its own two satellites. The next closest dwarf planet is Eris, named after the Greek goddess of discord and strife because it remains in the center of debate on what constitutes a planet. Eris has a 557-year orbit, and sometimes it is so far away from the sun that its atmosphere collapses and freezes on its surface. This ice reflects a lot of sunlight, which is how it was originally discovered. Scientists believe it has the same composition as Pluto, but are unsure as no official data can be recorded because it is so far away. Eris is smaller than our moon, but has its own satellite named Dysnomia. Lastly, there's Sedna, named after the Inuit goddess who lives at the bottom of the frigid Arctic Ocean. The temperature on Sedna never reaches above negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It orbits the sun in 10,500 years, and its distance ranges from 76 to 1,000 astronomical units. It is believed to be between 915 to 1,600 kilometers in diameter and be composed of methane, water, and nitrogen ices. It orbits so far out that it is three times the distance of Neptune to the sun, and it never even enters the Kuiper belt. It is believed to be the first body observed that belongs to the Oort cloud. Speaking of Neptune, starting just beyond its orbit, the Kuiper belt is a disk that stretches between 30 to 55 astronomical units away. It is estimated to contain trillions of comets and objects. Short period comets, comets with orbital periods less than 200 years and have been observed more than once, are contained within this disk. The first Kuiper Belt object, or KBO, was discovered in 1992 when an object was detected about 42 astronomical units from the Sun. It is 20 times wider than the asteroid belt and 200 times more massive. Beyond this is the Oort cloud. It is a spherical cloud composed of trillions of icy bodies made up of ammonia, water, and methane. Long period comets, comets with an orbital period of more than 200 years, reside here. The total mass of these comets in the cloud is believed to be 40 times larger than Earth. Also, this sphere encompasses the whole solar system and is estimated to extend three light years away from the sun. Scientists theorize that the cloud begins around 5,000 astronomical units away and ends 100,000 astronomical units away from the sun. This sphere was named after astronomer Jan Oort, who hypothesized its existence in 1950, and although its actual existence has not yet been proven through direct observation, the reality of the Oort cloud is widely accepted in science. Only recently has a spacecraft been launched to explore the Kuiper belt, called New Horizons, so it will most likely be decades before any craft can be sent to the Oort cloud. 
There are many theorized and suggested objects and statistics about the Oort cloud, and as we know hardly anything about it for sure, they are all just guesses. There is still much to be discovered about the Oort cloud and even the Kuiper belt, and there may yet be undiscovered dwarf planets out there, as our technology is not sufficient enough to explore so far.